Hey, what's up you guys? It's Scott with Everyday Home Repairs. Today in the bathroom and doing a little work in the vanity area. I have a vanity top off, I have the faucet out, and I'm just installing some shutoff valves here at both the hot and cold water lines. Why I'm doing that? It's best practice to be able to shut off the water at your different fixtures. So if you ever need to change a cartridge or change the faucet or just address a leak, you can do that here and isolate it from the rest of your plumbing, opposed to always having to go to your main water shutoff valve. So this kind of was originally built with just 93 soldered in fittings at this inlet. So we're going to take that off and install readily available brass craft compression quarter turn water shutoff. I like the quarter turn opposed to the multi turn. That's just my preference. I think they hold up a little bit better. So let's jump in. I'll show you what tools you're gonna need for this job and then we'll get after it. So tools or supplies for the job are pretty minimal. You can see there's an old roller tray in the bottom and that's to catch water. You're always gonna have some type of water that's gonna leak out while you do this work. So it's good to have a tray or something to catch it with and then some rags handy to clean it up. Also, to clean off the copper pipe and make sure it's smooth for the ferrule to fit on from the compression part of the fitting, I'm going to have a little emery cloth or sandpaper to do that. Now, a good set of channel locks and a crescent wrench is what you're going to need to actually tighten that down. And then to remove this old 90 degree fitting from the copper pipe, I do have a mini tube cutter which the nice thing is this is going to be able to fit in the tightest possible spot because I don't have a ton of extra pipe here. Actually, I have about an inch and a quarter coming out of the wall and this takes off about 5 16 So from the fitting that you're gonna have to remove, this is gonna set on the side and you're gonna twist it around. That's gonna take another 5 16 off that pipe. So I'm gonna be sitting right at a little under that one inch and you need about an inch for these compression fittings to for everything to go on correctly. So let's start off with this guy and let's cut this 90 degree fitting off. Like most projects, it's all about the prep work. So before using the tube cutter, we're gonna use emery cloth and smooth out the pipe for any of the extra solder against that fitting because we want the tube cutter to right, ride right along the side of the 90 degree fitting. So once you have it clean, now you can take your tube cutter. And remember guys, down in the description, you'll have links to all the different supplies and tools used on this video. But you take your time, you'll slowly tighten down the cutting wheel, do a few circles, cut away at the pipe, and then do about a quarter turn each time and keep cutting until you'll, you'll start to feel you're getting close to the end. And then most likely, especially with a 90 degree like this, and depending on where you're at in your home, you probably still have quite a bit of water left in your lines. So you'll spring a link like this, and now you know why we have the roller pan. Much better to catch all that water than let it land on your vanity base and start seeping down through the cracks. So this could take a while, you know, give it five or 10 minutes, let it drain out, maybe open up some of your other fixtures until it stops dripping. Now we have it down where it's just doing a drip every few seconds. So we'll take the emery cloth and clean everything up again. We'll take the old flange off, taking this as an opportunity to get a better looking chrome flange on. Again, you're looking for about an inch of pipe, and I'm right at that uh, with this pipe sticking out of the wall. So I don't have much extra. I'm gonna have to kind of push everything in place. So put the new flange in place, and then we'll take our shutoff, and the order of operations here is the nut, the ferrule, and then the valve itself. Tighten everything up by hand till you start to get it snug down. Then I'll take my channel locks and my crescent wrench. Channel locks holding the valve body itself and then the crescent wrench I will start to tighten the nut 
and that compresses that ferrule down on the pipe. And once everything's tight, then we'll check it out. Remember to turn the valve off before turning your water on. So we'll hit the main water valve. You can hear it pressurizing the system. Good thing is we don't see any leaks, but I do want to confirm that I'm getting water at this fixture. Okay, so you saw that little mess, so we are getting water there, but we're not having a leak. I would keep the full system pressurized and then just monitor the bottom side of your valve. What you'll see with some of these slow leaks is it'll slowly build up on the bottom side and drip down if you do have a little bit of leak. But all in all, this is looking really good. All right, so now both the water shutoff valves are installed and I'm ready to move on to clean up the wall, painting, and getting the vanity top installed. If your scenario is a little different, I do encourage you to jump down in the comments and I'd be happy to jump in and at least help you out as much as I can or point you in the right direction. Don't forget down in the description, you'll find links to all the supplies and tools we use. And before you take off, subscribe to our channel as we have videos like this coming out on a weekly basis to help you around the house with your repairs and home improvements. And we'll catch you on the next one. Take care.